Um, so now I am very pleased to introduce our guest tonight. Dr. Nancy Wise is an educational consultant who specializes in French immersion. In her Toronto office, she consults with parents who are either hesitant to enroll their children in French immersion or who have children who are experiencing difficulty in French immersion. She works closely with parents to help their children gain access to the supports they need to increase their opportunities for success, for success in the French immersion program. And during her presentations to school boards, teachers, organizations, and parent group, parents groups, she spends a lot of time sharing research and evidence to dispel common myths about French immersion. And I am so pleased that she is here with us tonight and we'll be sharing some of that research. Nancy, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is a great opportunity to share information. Well, I wanna jump right in. The, the title of this webinar is, Is French Immersion Suitable for Children with Dyslexia? And as you know, many parents and educators believe that French Immersion is not suitable for children with reading disabilities. And I know that these beliefs sometimes prevent these children from being included in the program or you know, parents are counseled to remove their child from the French Immersion program when they're struggling. Um, but I was hoping you could tell us what the research and evidence says about the suitability of French Immersion for children with reading disabilities. Such an important question, thank you. So this whole notion that French Immersion is suitable for some learners, but not for other learners, has never been substantiated by research evidence. In fact, most of the evidence does indicate that with appropriate support, the majority of students, including those with special education needs, can be successful in the program. You know, the Ontario Ministry of Education published a document in 2013, a framework for French as a second language in Ontario schools. And in that document, it clearly articulates on page 16 that all students can learn French as a second language with appropriate support. And that document was followed up two years later by another one including students with special education needs in French as a second language programs. And again, that idea is articulated that it's all about appropriate support. So how do we know who these children are that need this appropriate support? So tonight, I'm going to be arguing that a preventative approach is needed for French immersion students who are at risk for reading disabilities like dyslexia, an approach that focuses on early screening and the, prevent, the provision of literacy instruction that is based on scientific evidence, otherwise known as structured literacy, and it should be implemented right in the French immersion setting. Um, when I work with families, they come with a lot of questions and a lot of their questions are based on common myths about what French immersion is, what it isn't. And so I spend a lot of time during our consultations just trying to dispel some of these common myths. And I wanted to just go over four common questions that I get asked during my consultations. And the first one is something like this. My child, I think my child is at risk for dyslexia or my child has been diagnosed with dyslexia. Do you think that at switching to English is the answer. And I say to parents, switching is rarely the answer because children with dyslexia are going to have difficulty with reading both in French and in English. 
their difficulties are neurobiological and have nothing to do with the language of instruction in the classroom. The underlying impairment is part of the child's genetic profile. So that impairment is going to impact the child's ability to learn to read in any language. And I know, Alicia, you're very familiar with the brain research that's been done. I want to try and put it in the context of French immersion. Brain imaging studies have shown that the brains of children with dyslexia look different than the brains of children who don't have that diagnosis. And the research has been very clear about how they have this core deficit in phonological processing and that we have to provide them with explicit and systematic instruction as well as repeated practice to build up these neuro pathways in the regions of the brain that are responsible for phonological processing. And these brain imaging studies have shown that when we teach children this relationship between sounds in spoken language and the letters that represent those sounds, if we teach it in a very explicit and systematic manner, there are significant increases in brain activity in the area, areas of the brain that were not previously active. So this whole idea that switching to English is going to be the remedy really it's irrelevant. They're going to struggle if they have been diagnosed with dyslexia in both languages. Another question I'm asked is, do you think my dyslexic child is at greater risk in French immersion? And I often say, no, as long as they are provided with the kinds of instruction that we have seen is highly effective for children with dyslexia. And with that kind of instruction and repeated practice in both the school setting and outside of the school setting, they can certainly benefit from participation in French immersion. They're not at greater risk. Um, there was a theory proposed back in 1986 by Philip Goff and William Tumner called The Simple View of Reading, which I know you know all about. And they talked about how reading comprehension problems have to do with weak comprehension of language as well as weak decoding skills or weaknesses in both. And so I wanted to try and give you a French immersion context for that. We want our children in the French immersion setting to understand what they read, to comprehend the text that they're given. So for French second language teachers, they have re two really important jobs. And the first is to enhance the children's French language comprehension skills by providing them with all kinds of explicit vocabulary instruction through songs and rhymes and read alouds and all that kind of thing to build up their background knowledge and vocabulary in French. And their second important job is to get the students decoding skills up to the same level as their language comprehension so that when they eventually see words in print, they're gonna understand what they mean. So just to give you an example, if we think about the French word sack, if a child has learned that word in the classroom, the child understands that it means bag in English, and then they come across that word in text. 
They see the letters S, A, C, but they don't, they are, they are unable to um, sound out that word sac. They see the letters, they don't understand the sounds those letters represent. So they're not going to be able to get any meaning from the text. They have language comprehension skills, but they don't have the needed uh, decoding skills. And conversely, if they do have the decoding skills, if they know that S makes a S sound and A makes an A sound and C makes a K sound, they can sound out the word, they know it says SAC, but they don't know what SAC means. They haven't um, grasped that vocabulary word, the meaning of that word. So again, they're going to have difficulty getting meaning from the text. So French immersion teachers have to make sure that the students are getting both French language comprehension skills and decoding skills in order for them to benefit from participation in the program. A third question I'm always asked is, well, does my dyslexic child have the capacity to learn two languages? And yes, research has shown repeatedly that this widespread skepticism about educating children in two languages is largely unfounded. Uh, studies have found that there is no reason to exclude them from second language learning opportunities. And Fred Genesee, who's done an, a huge amount of work in this area of dual language learning and, and at-risk learners, has said that you know, these learners have the capacity to learn two languages as naturally and as easily as one. And the last um, question I'm asked often is, are the difficulties faced by second language learners similar to the difficulties faced by monolingual learners? And the answer is yes, learning to read in a second language is very similar to learning to read in one. And I want to just quote uh, Genesee directly from this article entitled Dyslexia, Bilingualism and Learning a Second Language, which appeared in Psychology Today. Genesee says the core difficulties faced by second language learners who are dyslexic are the same as those of monolingual children with dyslexia. The core problem for these children is difficulty to learning to decode written words accurately and fluently so that they can make sense of them and understand written text. If children's word reading skills are impaired, then their comprehension of written text will also be impaired because they cannot read the individual words accurately and fluently enough to create meaningful text. So one of the things that Genesee states is that, you know, second language learners benefit from the same kinds of reading remediation as children who are learning to read in their first language. Thank you. I love that you brought the simple view of reading into that. That so completely echoes the experience that we've had with my dyslexic son in French immersion and that he loved the oral language French. He had no problem at all picking that up. He loved chatting in French. And, and that was actually his favorite part of school in grade one. Whenever you'd ask him, what do you love about school? He said, I love speaking French. That was what he would always say. But he couldn't read, he couldn't decode words in either English or French. And that, you know, we had to separate that and view those as two very separate parts of what we needed to work on with him. Um, so I love that you brought that into the context of French immersion. I think that's so relevant for people. 
I also love that you were talking about the preventative approach. Like this is something that we're talking about all the time, the need for universal early screening for kids. And we know that schools have been very much encouraged to be doing this, to be screening all children using evidence-based screening tools. But at the same time, we know that it's not consistently happening across the province in the English program. Yeah. So what are you seeing in, the, in terms of early screening happening in the French immersion program? Is, is that happening? And what tools are people using? I think there is some early screening going on. I'm not sure if it's screening for reading disabilities per se, um, and it's certainly not being done consistently either. Um, what, what needs to be done is screening immediately upon entry into the French immersion setting uh, to just flag students who may be at risk for dyslexia. What tends to happen in the French immersion setting, you know, the children come in and they're immediately immersed in this new language. And there's a lot of emphasis placed on listening and speaking skills and the, and the development of those skills. And over time, when um, reading instruction begins, children, some of them, begin to struggle. And it isn't always clear whether the struggle they're having has to do with them not having enough time to acquire French language proficiency or whether it's an actual reading problem. So there, what it often happens is, is, you know, they take a wait and see approach and parents are often encouraged to try to be patient and give their child a little bit more time to develop the skills that they need in French and the months go by and the next thing you know it's the end of grade two or beginning grade three and the child's been diagnosed with reading disabilities and has completely missed out on any early intervention or structured literacy instruction. Um, when I did my doctoral research we, I was working with children who start French immersion in grade one. So my OISE research team at the University of Toronto got in there right away. It was grade one. We, we didn't want to wait for the children to develop proficiency in French. And we did the screening. And out of 252 grade one students, we were able to identify 44. So we knew that these were children who were gonna need some support. And I'll talk a little bit more about the kinds of support we provided a little bit later. Um, did you wanna talk a little bit about reading interventions. Hi, sorry, my audio cut out there for a second. That's okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I love that you're talking about the, um, the need for early intervention with these kids. This is so relevant for both kids in French immersion and in, um, and in, in English programs. Um, and I wonder if you could speak to the types and, and if students in French immersion you're seeing are getting the sort of evidence-based intervention that they need. There are some school boards who are implementing some reading intervention programs that are based on scientific evidence and what we've, what we've learned is effective for children with dyslexia. But unfortunately, many are not implementing those programs. And some have the best of intentions and, and children are you know, being pulled out in small groups and they're being taught how to guess when they see unfamiliar words. They're being told or taught to look at the picture and take a guess 
what word do you think belongs here? Or have a look at the first letter in this word and guess what that word might be. Or let's look at the context, you know, listen to the sentence. What word do you think makes sense in this sentence? And those strategies, those guessing strategies are not what children with dyslexia need. They need something very explicit and systematic and cumulative and multi-sensory. Um, but I want to shine a light on a school board that is making a difference. And that is the Limestone District School Board. They have they are lucky to have a student support teacher named Kim Lockhart in one of their single track French immersion schools. And Kim has the role of student support teacher, which involves taking children who have been flagged as being at risk for reading disabilities and providing them with structured literacy instruction beginning in grade one. I think she works with children in grades one through three. These children are pulled every day for 15 minutes for six week blocks. And then when the six weeks are over, she takes on a whole other group and gives that group six weeks and then goes back to the first group and it goes back and forth right through to the end of June and at the end of it all, those children have had 18 weeks of structured literacy support in small groups. And probably if the, in her pro, in her school, the children have already got a French background. They've been in full day kindergarten, so they've had French immersion for two years by the time she begins working with them. So she, she's able to use French for her early intervention program. And I think it's highly likely that if structured literacy was implemented in the kindergarten program and in grade one, Kim would probably have fewer children who are referred to her for this small group tier two support. But I wanted to shine a light on it because it is a wonderful program. At the end of the day, she is seeing 50 at-risk children in the course of the school year. And, and that's just wonderful and something that I wish we could see in other school boards. When I did my doctoral research, the children also got 18 weeks of early intervention in small groups, but these children started the French immersion program in grade one. And my research team was doing their early screening with grade ones who had just entered the program. Um, we used English for our early intervention program. Kim uses French because the children have already had French for two years. Um, and what we were able to demonstrate is that these children who received the kinds of support that was based on the science were able to improve their French word reading skills. So even though they were provided with instruction in small groups using English, their French, they made enormous French reading gains. And that is what we call in the literature cross linguistic transfer. But what we learned from our study is two things. One that there's no need to wait for children to develop French language proficiency. We can get in there right away, screen the children, see who needs to get some extra support and begin to give that scientific evidence-based instruction also in English. Um, there's no need for them to switch to the English program because they're getting the kinds of support 
that they need right in the French immersion program. Um, yeah, that's, I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that difference. Yeah, that's so true. And I felt like from my own experience, I wasn't able to get specific French help for my son in learning to decode. I helped him at home using a structured literacy approach in English, and that really did transfer. Obviously, the sounds that he needs are different, but that skill of being able to, you know, blend words together, you know, if you can do that in English, you can transfer that to French. And that's really what we found for sure. And also, I just wanted to mention that Kim, who you mentioned from Limestone, is going to be doing our next webinar in two weeks. So if anybody's interested in learning more about what Kim is doing in Limestone, please join us again in, in two weeks. Um, uh, my next question really is about, um, is about other supports that can be available to kids in the French Immersion Program. So obviously, we want to make sure that the kids get the support that they need to learn how to read. That is fundamentally important. Uh, but there are other supports that we can provide in terms of accommodations on IEPs to ensure that they um, have all of the tools at their disposal to be successful. So I was wondering if you could just speak a little bit um, to that, to IEP accommodations, um, and what sorts of things are available and appropriate for students in French immersion. Sure. The um, individual education plans are implemented in the French immersion setting in the same way that they are in the regular English program. And um, one of the key accommodations for children with dyslexia is assistive technology. A lot of the schools are using Read and Write for Google Chrome, which allows um, children to, uh, in both French and English to use speech to text, text to speech, and word prediction software that really helps them um, access some of the grade level content that they're getting. Um, IEPs, as you know, have three different types of accommodations, instructional, environmental, and assessment accommodations. And, and they're really no different than the, the kind of thing you'd see in the English stream. But I wanted to um, say something about AERO, A-E-R-O, which stands for Alternative Education Resources Ontario. And I know that on your website, you have uh, two webinars, two previous webinars that were recorded, one in French and one in English, by someone who works with Aero. And what I wanted to say about it is that when I was working as a special ed resource teacher in a French immersion school, I would request an account with Aero, and then I could register my students who needed digital access to grade level content in French and in English. So I had students who had, you know, their textbooks, French and English textbooks loaded right onto their Chromebooks. They had novels of, available to them that, you know, their peers were reading during novel story novel study and they could access the same content as as their peers and Aero just has an amazing amount of material um, that is that can be really useful for children with dyslexia in the French immersion program especially as that content gets quite complex in the later junior and intermediate grades. I think you had mentioned something about a, an accommodation that your son used very effectively. Yes, absolutely. He's no, he doesn't really use any sort of assistive text for English, but he does use it quite, um, quite a lot for his French content. Um, and I'd actually love to share the screen so I can just show people what we have set up for him because it's a, a product that is available to everyone for free. It's not anything that you need to purchase. And I have found it um, just so helpful. Um, what we use is we use um, Microsoft uh, OneNote. 
um, with Immersive Reader. So I'll just show you, um, sharing my screen here. Can you see the screen? Is that shared correctly? Yep. Fantastic. So what OneNote is, is it's essentially a digital binder. So um, my dyslexic son, like many students, dyslexic or not, I think really struggles with organization as well. So in this format, he can have a tab for each one of his different subjects. And then within here, we can embed articles and, and different things. So he, can, he collects all of the different things that his teacher puts up on, um, on Google Classroom as a PDF, and he can stick it right here in, in the OneNote. And then he can use this feature that's called Immersive Reader. Um, it's, it works in both English and French to help him read the text. So when you can come in here, you can see that it strips away any of the extraneous information that's on the page that might be distracting. And he can actually change the text preferences too. So this is set up, this is his actual notebook and it's set up the way he likes it. So you can change the, the font size and you can increase, this is something that he appreciates. He appreciates having a little bit more spacing between letters. Um, you can also um, add line focus so that it's easier to stay on track. And so you're just focusing on one word at a time. But the That's really correct. brilliant part about, about this is that it, it will, if you go to a word you don't know, you can, um, you can just click on the word and it, it will speak it for you. I'm just gonna mute myself so that you don't hear it twice. It will speak the word for you in French, but it will also show the translation down here in English. So if it's a word that they don't know, um, they can do it this way. You can also use it to, to read entire articles. Um, I prefer it when he uses it to read it himself. And then when he comes to a word that he doesn't know, he just clicks on, on that one word. But when he gets into really long text articles, if he's got five or six pages to read in history, you know, he's in grade seven now, uh, he'll often print out a copy and then just and listen to the entire passage um, with this tool. So this has been like completely transformative for helping him to stay on top of his work now that he's in grade seven and he's getting like quite a lot of these longer history type articles to, to go through. Um, and the other thing just to share with parents, because this was also sort of transformative to me, I don't speak French, I don't read French. <laughs> so when things come home in French and I, I need to help the kids with it, it can be a little bit difficult. So I use this myself. Um, and when you, you there's a, an app that you can put on your phone uh, called Microsoft Lens, which is also a free app and it connects directly to OneNote. So if they come home with a piece of paper or you have a book, you can use Lens with your phone to just take a picture of the actual page. And then with just one click, it will import it into your child's notebook. And then it can strip out the text as well. So this is, this is one that actually was a photo sent to me by my daughter's uh, teacher. She's in grade four. And she was supposed to be listening to this text during a read aloud, but she wasn't really paying attention very much. So he asked me to read it to her, but of course, I don't read French. Uh, so I used the, I, I opened the image up on my phone in Lens and then transported it into this notebook. And again, even with just this picture, this is the original article. Uh, with, with the picture, I can use the Immersive Reader tool um, to read this text to her. I'm just coming up there. There it is. So um, anyway, that is a, a tool I just wanted to share because I've found that to be uh, so very useful in terms of keeping organized and helping my son access that more complex text uh, now that he's getting into grade seven and eight when things are getting a little bit more difficult. So. That's great. And it's so empowering for you to be able to, you know, hear it in English ahead of time so that you know how to best help him. That's a wonderful tool. Yeah. Uh, so my my thank you for letting me share that. My next uh, my next question is that um, uh, we know of course that for many children in French immersion who have reading difficulties or dyslexia, they're going to need support both in school and outside of school. Uh, that's certainly been the case here. So what do you recommend that parents do um, outside of school to help their children succeed in the FI program? 
Right. Well, again, I'm going to go back to that simple view of reading where we need, you know, to develop both their French language skills and their decoding skills. So for their French language skills, a lot of parents hire French tutors and that's great to help develop those conversational skills or to help with some homework from time to time. I know Canadian Parents for French has a wonderful list of tutors that parents can hire. Um, but the other thing that I like to encourage that will increase the child's opportunities for success in French immersion and build those language comprehension skills is act our activities outside of the classroom to show them that French is actually a language that people use in their daily lives outside of the walls of the classroom. So there are things like cooking classes in French and there are French guided tours in Toronto of the Toronto Zoo, Black Creek Pioneer Village, the Art Gallery of Ontario, the Ontario Science Centre, they all have French tours and you know, parents can also expose their children to French television, movies, audiobooks, podcasts, cultural events. There's all kinds of ways to show them that this isn't just a 9 to 3.30 type of language. This is an, a, a language that a lot of people use. Um, but the other part, that, that's all to develop the language comprehension. The other part is the decoding skills and how can parents help with that. If they're in a financial position to consider getting some remediation going, there's Orton-Gillingham, which of course is the gold standard for children with dyslexia. But I've also had parents um, sign up for courses themselves so that they can learn how to best support their children in the development of decoding skills. And I know on your website, Jan McLean has two webinars, part one and part two, that are geared to parents who want to um, help their children. And yes, it's all in English, but again, what the, the strategies that the children learn are going to be transferable to French. So um, all of those things together can really help children who are in the French immersion setting. Thank you. And before I see we have a ton of questions, this is 77 questions in the chat. So before no we get to that, do you have any final thoughts and questions you'd like to get in before we start taking the questions from our participants? Yes, um, a couple of things. So first of all, I want parents to know that by enrolling your child in a French immersion program, you are giving them the gift of a second or additional language. And as a result of that, your child is going to benefit from the many advantages associated with functional bilingualism. But this is the message I want to leave with parents. If your child is having difficulty in the French immersion program, you have the right to expect that your school team will partner with you to address your child's difficulties. You have the right to expect that to the extent possible, everything will be done to increase your child's opportunities for success in French immersion. And you have the right to expect that any decision regarding your child's participation in French immersion will take into account his or her strengths, needs, and interest because at the end of the day, the decision to keep your child in French immersion or switch to the regular English program is yours and yours alone. That's the key message for parents. Um, 
if people want to connect with me. I know there are a lot of questions that need to be answered, <laughs> but I have a website, uh, French Immersion Educational Consulting. That's a mouthful. So if you just Google Nancy Wise French Immersion, it'll come up. I'm very active on Twitter, especially. I share a lot of research and articles about French immersion. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. So you can connect with me on, in any of those ways. Thank you. I love that point that really, at the end of the day, the decision is the parent's decision and, and, and taking into account the strengths and needs and interests of the child. That is really the big takeaway here. You know, this is something that myself as a parent, I have really grappled with so much. My husband and I have discussed this over the years. And at the end of the day, we asked our son when he was in grade two, when he was really starting to, when that problem with decoding was really starting to catch up with him, you know, what do you want to do? And he loved French. When we asked him, what is your favorite part of the school day? The first thing he would say is, well, recess, <laughs> hanging out with my friends. And then the next thing was always French. I love it. So we made the decision to support him in whatever way we could. And we're so glad that we have. I really feel like it's paid off. But at the end of the day, that was a decision that he was very um, involved in. And he is very motivated to work at, at um succeeding in French as well. And I think that it's it's such an individual decision for each parent taking into account all of those things about their child. Um, so thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over to Joanne and Veronica, who've been reading everybody's questions, uh, to ask Nancy uh, some of the questions. Take it away, ladies. All right. Thank you, everyone. We have very qualitative questions, I have to say. One very important one we're seeing is um, the question is when parents are requesting support, first of all, many parents don't know how to ask for support for their child in French immersion. And secondly, what is appropriate support? And what if there is no support at all in the French immersion school because there are no French speaking special education teachers? There are few. French speaking, <laughs> special education teachers. And I just want to say that there would be more if we didn't have this shortage of French immersion teachers across the country. I, I hear from a lot of French second language teachers who are qualified in special education. They have, you know, all of the courses they need to be specialists and yet because of the shortage of teachers, they become classroom teachers. And wouldn't it be great if they could use the skill set that they have to help children who are in great need? But uh, so th this was a multi level question you asked. So the first was how, how to get support. Is that yes. right? Yes. And what would you define as appropriate support? Mm -hmm for a, a child with dyslexia. Okay, so when a child begins to experience difficulty in reading, the first thing I would counsel parents is do not wait. Do not be convinced that it, you know, they just need a little bit more time to develop their French language skills. That child needs support quickly and it needs to start as soon as possible. What kind of support, support that, well, it starts with screening, right? We have to screen to see where those areas of weakness are. If it's phonological processing, which is the core deficit for dyslexia, then you want to help children, um, learn phonological awareness and phonemic awareness in particular. So they're learning the sounds and how those sounds in the language are represented by letters. It is different in French than it is in English, especially the vowels. A lot of the consonants are the same or similar 
but um, as Alicia was saying, you know, she had to specifically address those differences when she was trying to help her child between um, how sounds are represented in English versus French. And, and that's important because a child with dyslexia is going to need that instruction in both languages. So I've addressed what, what kinds of instruction they need and how to go about it. What was the rest of that question? <laughs> I did answer the rest and that was what happens when schools don't have any supports and you were talking about the lack of special, special education teachers in French, unfortunately. This is, this is huge. Yeah. So, I mean, the bulk of, of um, consultations that I have with parents have to do with this issue, which is, you know, they're screaming for support and no support is being provided. So this is why I do what I do in speaking with school boards and parent groups and teacher organizations, because this is just discriminatory and inequitable. And, and I just want to, you know, scream it from the rooftop, rooftops, it's, it's got to change. So if you have, imagine, you know, a lot of French immersion programs are housed in one building that has a regular English program. So in one classroom, you have a grade three child who has just been diagnosed with dyslexia and they're in a French immersion program and they're not really being offered any type of remediation that will address their issues. And right next door is a grade three classroom that is part of the regular English program. And that grade three child who's been diagnosed with dyslexia has been offered the EMPOWER program, which is a program that is research-based that was developed at the Hospital for Sick Children, Dr. Maureen Lovett. And every day for an hour for the entire school year, that child gets support to develop their decoding skills. But next door, nothing. Well, as far as I'm concerned, French immersion students deserve the same access to support services to develop their decoding skills and word recognition skills as children in the regular English program. So in my view, we have to collaborate. We have to you know, tap into people's expertise. If on one side of the building, you have all this expertise, then let's pull that together, the, the English teachers and the French teachers and develop some professional learning communities and share information, build capacity so that we can properly address the difficulties that our children are having. And, and really that's what it's all about is our children in the building, not those children and the French immersion children, it, it's our children. We have to, if, if kids are struggling, we have to look at it as, as, a, as something that we all have to work towards. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And when we're speaking of resources, I, I just got a comment from my vice, vice president who's looking in. Uh, that we do have a section of French as a second language resources yes. on the uh, IDA Ontario website. It's under resources and it's called Literacy Structurée. And uh, I will be adding the framework for FSL in Ontario schools and including children with um, learning difficulties, the, those two documents. And I'll include the article that you posted tonight. Uh, I'll include those in there, but if people would like to go see the resources, we also have a wonderful video that we've translated from the Jan McLean video, which uh, by Elisabeth Beaulieu, it's in the previous webinar section of our website, and it, it shows how to do structured literacy intervention with young children. So those are great resources on the IDA Ontario website. We've had lots of questions about uh, screeners and programs, and uh, Elisabeth does provide a screener 
Um, so there is hope out there. And I'll contact Kim Betts and see if she would like us to share her information on how she intervenes with her six-week program. We could share that on our website as well. All right. That would be great. Right. So Veronica. Uh, Nancy, one of the questions that came up several times was uh, if they're wondering, do you think uh, children's success in French immersion depends on the age of entry? You know, the research has shown that children who enter the program in early immersion, so either kindergarten or grade one, tend to have some skills better developed than those who enter, say, in late immersion, grade seven. But really, when, when they go to high school, they mix the early immersion children with the late immersion children. They all, you know, take the same courses together. So the beauty of early immersion is that they that young children just pick up languages so easily and the content you know what they're learning is so much less complex um, than what they would be learning in grade seven so um, i'm a huge proponent of the early immersion program there's a great video that joe dix put out about early immersion. You can Google it. Um, he's out in New Brunswick. It's probably about 10 years old, but it goes over all the, all, all the advantages of early immersion versus the other forms. Okay. Great, thank you. Joanne? Yes. Um, um, there's a question about phonological awareness. Should it be taught in the child's mother tongue or in both languages? Such a good question. So the research has been very clear on this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what language you teach it in. It is a cognitive mechanism that is not language specific. So in, in our research, we taught phonological awareness in English, those skills transferred to French, the children's French phonological awareness skills improved, and that helped them develop their French reading skills. So it can be taught in any language and it will transfer across languages. Um, okay. Uh, do you happen to have another one? Uh. Yeah. Okay. There's a often this question that parents have, and that is, if my child is in French immersion up until grade six, and then I put them in later years, continuing in immersion, will their English suffer? Thank you for that question. So the research has consistently shown that by grade six, any disparity that there was between the English skills of French immersion students versus students in the regular English program, they, they, it all evens out that not only does it even out, sometimes the English language skills of the French immersion um, students surpass those of um, the children in the regular English program. They're, they're not going to, um, their English language skills will not be adversely affected. And, and what we've learned in, in second language education is when you learn another language, it actually enhances your understanding of your own first language. So there's benefits on both sides. Great. Um, another question that came up, and I hope I don't repeat myself. Um, uh, where does assistive technology fit in? I know we talked a little bit about that, and Alicia, you touched on it. 
but sort of what age would be an appropriate stage to start assistive technology? Uh, I mean, that could be in French immersion or in, in a regular stream, but if you had any opinion on that, it came up a few times. I do. Um, I've started kids as early as grade two. I mean, grade three is probably a good uh, starting point if you wanted to generalize, but listen, kids love computers and you want to hook them before they start to feel a lot of frustration. And these tools can really be life-changing for children who are just beginning to feel frustrated, just beginning to notice that their classmates are reading better than they are or, or being more successful at tasks than they are. So if a child in grade two can, you know, with, with their two fingers, <laughs> deal with some of that, then, you know, all the power to them. Super, thank you. Joanne? Yes, in special education, there's always the debate about accommodation and modification. Now, if a child has dyslexia, would you, what is your, do you have a stand on whether they should have accommodations or modifications or both, depending on the child? What would you I, say, Nancy? I do have a stand on that. I think I always encourage parents to try accommodations first. I really feel that modification can be a slippery slope for some kids. It in, modifications involve changes in curriculum expectations. And yes, they'll make school less of a struggle, but over time, modifications can really limit options at the high school level. And so I, um, I try my best to discourage parents from accepting modifications at the beginning and, and just see how it goes. But those that do agree to modifications, um, you know, I write this question down for them so that they take it with them to every meeting. And the question is, what timeline and strategy will, will be implemented to get my child back up to grade level? You can never forget to ask that question at every um, school meeting that you attend because what often happens, unfortunately, is the child just keeps slipping and that achievement gap gets wider and wider and it's just not a good situation. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you. Veronica? Thank you all so much for that. Um, unfortunately, we are at the end of our hour. <laughs> I'd like to just thank everyone and I'm sorry we've had so many questions. Um, but you are encouraged. We put uh, Nancy's uh, contact information and you're encouraged to email her and reach out to her directly with further questions. Uh, before we go, I would just like to, um, uh, before we wrap up, I would just like to mention our next webinar, which as I, I actually did mention a little bit earlier is um, structured literacy in the French as a second language classroom. And that is fe featuring um, Kimberly and Natalie from the Limestone District School Board talking about how they actually um, teach uh, French immersion, teaching those sound, um, sound correspondences. So it's very similar to the webinars that we did last year, if you watch them, with Emily uh, teaching structured literacy in the kindergarten classroom, but this is going to be using those same strategies with French sounds um, and, and the French words. So that's uh, coming up on Wednesday, February 24th, and you can register for that on our website, of course. Um, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. If you'd like to support the continued work of IDA Ontario, I, I would encourage you to become a member. As I said, we are a completely volunteer run charity. So if you're interested in getting involved with our work, we're always happy to hear from you. 
And thank you for joining us tonight. And I want to say thank you very much to Nancy Wise for sharing her time with us tonight. I know that this presentation is something that a lot of parents were very excited to hear about. And I'm so thrilled that so many of you joined us today. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you.